Welcome, I'm Dr. Terry Warren, and this is Health and Wellness Program, and I'm your host. And today, I'm excited to have with me a very special guest, Gwen Hill. Welcome, Gwen, to the show. Thanks for having me. You know, Gwen is a, a health care professional, and she owns a wellness center here in Los Angeles where she provides vitamin supplements for people. Uh, she also does things such as, as detox, but what I'd like to do first is take a minute to find out about Gwen. Gwen, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm just basically boring. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I'm a certified natural health care practitioner. I, um, have, I do detoxes, cleansing. I think cleansing is real important, so I really focus a lot on cleansing. I think we should cleanse like four times a year. I do ear conings where I put a, a cone or a candle to your ear and pull out inflammation. I do iridology where I can read the irises of your eyes and just see what's going on inside and maybe, you know, offer some type of vitamin or herbal supplement that might help assist whatever is going on in the body. So I do those types of things. And I'm at, I'm in Los Angeles. You're in Los Angeles. Yes. So let me ask you a question. You mentioned some very unique and different things. And I know that uh, the, you know, the first time I was introduced to something like ear uh, the ear coning, um, I had gone to a, a natural health show, and I walked by, and I saw this person laying on a bed, and their ear was on fire. And I thought, this is crazy. What are they doing? No, and, no, and, and, no. And, and, and so <laughs> I, I saw this fire coming from this thing, and I go, what, are they, what in the world are they doing? You know, and that, I, I've never really talked about that on the show. So tell us a little bit about ear coning, why it's beneficial, and, and, and what it does. Well, the most amazing thing about your coning is, first of all, you're not on fire. The cone or the candle is on fire. The only thing that burns, you do not ever feel the heat or the flame. I mean, we cover you up, of course, and we light the end of the cone or candle, and it acts like a tornado in your ear or vacuum. It sucks all of the inflammation, earwax. Eight-legged freaks, you know what an eight-legged freak is? A spider. No. <laughs> you know, the things that crawl in our ears at night. So it pulls all those things out, and it gets rid of the inflammation. You have clearer vision. You hear better. I have a lot of people that have vertigo, and it has helped so much with the vertigo. You know, water gets in your ears and kind of throws you off. And so ear candling helps with all of that, sinus infection, sinus issues, sinus problems, ear aches, all those types of things. So it's really nice. And a lot of my clients, when they come in, they say, I mean, after a coning, they're like, oh, my God, I even see brighter. So it does so many amazing, wonderful things. So I suggest, you know, if you haven't tried it, you should try it. Now, is this a, this a process that's been around for a long time? Oh, forever, forever. Aztecs have been doing it for years. A lot of Hispanic people even roll newspapers and types of things and, you know, yeah. <laughs> so it's been around a long oh, time. Oh, yeah, it's ancient history, yes. It's wow. totally an uh, old, 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 old way to clean out your head. No. <laughs> Clean out your ears? Clean out your head, no. Clean out your ear, your head, everything. It just opens up everything. Sinuses. Like I said, it gets a lot of old wax. A lot of people, especially if you have a lot of sinus issues, you hold on to a lot of wax in your ears, and it clogs a lot, and inflammation, you know, wetness gets in there, and it gets, turns into inflammation in there. I pull it out. It looks like it's mold. It turns green sometimes. I've pulled out a spider, like I said. It was really funny because the lady had just gone to uh, camping, and it was really funny because, you know, in the wilderness, so the spider was green. So when we pulled it out, it was still green. It was like a fresh green spider. It was wonderful. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's great. Well, you know, I, I'm a great believer in, you know, using things that are natural. And, you know, I've often said on the show that, that I believe that for everything that someone struggles with, God created a solution in nature. And so, you know, one of the things that, you know, we, we like to talk about on this show is unique and different things that people can do uh, to help them live a healthier and, and be better stewards of their bodies. Oh, now, you mentioned two other things to me. You mentioned cleansing and you mentioned detox. Now, you know, I think a lot of people would think they were the same, but why don't you explain the difference and explain why someone would need to do those things and, and, and how they go about doing it? Okay, well, when I start off, I start off with, you know, have you cleansed yet this year? 
And then I suggest, you know, a four-time cleanse. A winter, spring, summer, fall. I think you should cleanse your body out. And those are full body cleanses where you take herbal supplements to remove the toxins in your body, the liver, the colon, the spleen, you know, the lungs especially. You know, like you want to get the toxins out. So those are herbal supplements that we use for that. And uh, detoxing the foot bath is actually a foot bath where I take a ionic array and we put it in water and it draws the toxins out of your body and you see the inflammation, you see the mucus, you see the lymphatic cleansing, you see everything, your joints feel better and of course yes the water turns colors and it shows you what area in your body it's working on and it's really good, it makes you feel good, your energy is better, you sleep better, your appetite is better, just everything. I have a lot of good, good responses from that. I even had a lady with endometriosis once, and when I was detoxing her, I asked, I said, do you have something going on in your little girl area? And she said, what do you see, what do you see? And I said, well, I see a lot of inflammation. And she happened to have had endometriosis. And I said, is it endometriosis? And she said, yes. And she was spending so much time in the bed a month because it cramped her up really bad. She was really having heavy bleeding and just really could not function. It just made her real tired, made her real sick. It hurt, you know, a lot of pain, very, very painful. And so after her foot bath, she was able to get up out of the bed. She did it back to back, so I have to say this. She did it on a Thursday, then a Saturday, and a Monday. But the Thursday made her feel so good. When she came back on Saturday, she had just like, Gwen, Gwen, oh my God, I feel so great, you know? And I said, good. By Monday, she felt even better. And after that, no more spending three weeks in the bed, laying on her back. She's up, running around, doing really, really well now, just from getting the inflammation out. Just eating right, detoxing, cleanses. I mean, you could do a daily cleanse. There are herbs out there that just give you a daily nice cleanse. Just a daily little help in your elimination. We have so much genetically modified food. Our water is full of all kinds of toxic waste now. I mean, it's, you know, regenerated water, reclaimed water, whatever they want to call it. It has a name on it, and it just tastes like stuff you need to really not drink. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have to do better for ourselves, so we have to supplement. And it doesn't matter if people say, oh, vitamins are no good, or why am I taking them? I'm wasting my money. That's not true. Our food is genetically modified. Our water is dirty. We need to put good things back in our bodies, especially vitamins, minerals, and herbal supplements. Well, I, I know that years ago, and I did a, a talk one time at, at a conference regarding this, and I know that years ago, when we ate our foods, all the vitamins and nutrients that you needed in your body, because your body is made up of trillions of cells. Oh, absolutely. And what happens is every day, millions of cells die. Well, before, and there's an area in the, and I, I don't want to get too scientific here, but there's an area in the soil called the rhizosphere. It, 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 it's so, sort of like the atmosphere, only the rhizosphere is the six inches of soil that is underneath the ground. And almost all of your, your, your vitamins and nutrients lie in that soil. Mm -hmm. And what happened was years ago when we ate natural, the, 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 there's a part at, at the root of every plant that lives in symbiotic relationship with a tomato, lettuce, cucumber, doesn't matter what it is, called mycorrhizae. Mm -hmm. And when the mycorrhizae would open, the nutrients and the vitamins would come in. So when you ate that food, you got everything that you needed. And you know, one of the things that, it, that uh, a lot of people contribute cancer to which, by the way, one out of every three people over 50 now have cancer. I mean, the numbers are staggering. But what happens is, is that when you're absorbing those foods now, you're no longer absorbing nutrients and vitamins, but you're absorbing chemicals, you're absorbing pesticides, you're absorbing all of those things into your body. And so now, when a, when a million cells die that day, rather than a million cells being rebuilt because of what you're eating, maybe only 50,000 cells rebuilt. Right. The next day, another million cells buy, and maybe 100,000 cells. So what's happened is, is that our body is being depleted of the things that it requires. Right, and so 
you know, one of the, one of the things that I found that, that vitamins and supplements are very, very beneficial for is replacing what would have normally been replaced when we ate naturally. Right. When, you know, one out of a thousand people had cancer instead of, uh, instead of one out of every three. So it, it, it's, really, it's really gotten way, way out of hand. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about that, that you were talking about the cleanses. And I know that, you know, there are different types of cleanses. Um, and, and one of the most prominent that people talk about is a colon cleanse. Because as they eat, the things attach, correct, to the colon? To the colon. And, 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 and they build up. Yes. Correct? Yes. And then, uh, and, and so explain, explain that a little bit and explain, because I, I mean, I've seen some pictures that I w would not want to put on the television program of, of things that came out of people that, that have done colon cleanses. Tell us a little bit more, because I, I believe that everybody out there, you know, the, there's a kidney cleanse and a liver cleanse. Now, those are separate cleanses? They can be a combination. They can be. It can be you a should, combination. You can, you do can them make at the it same easy. Time? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, absolutely. It's good that way. But a colon cleanse, you really want to do a colon cleanse. It's really good. I mean, what you eat should come back out in a few hours. You know, not in a few days, not in three days, not in four days, not in seven days. And you have so many people that think it's normal not to eliminate. You need to eliminate. If you eat it, it should come out. There's a reason God gave us this derriere. He wanted us to put it in and take it out. <laughs> so we are not supposed to keep it in. And so too many times people just keep on going and say it's okay for me not to have an elimination when it is not okay. So with a colon cleanse, what it does is it goes in, psyllium, psyllium, you know, and maybe a little cascara sagrada, something like that, will hit the upper lower, upper colon, push it on through, and push it on out the bottom colon. So the cascara sagrada will soften things, the psyllium will bulk, and then push it out. And of course, you need to drink a whole lot of water because psyllium will go jelly and jello jelly and jello inside and you don't want that to happen because then you have more problems because you're backed up even more so you want to drink your water and you need to drink your water you should actually drink your body weight twice in water a day if you wake up in the morning and you drink that eight ounces or 16 ounces of water keep it on your night table drink that eight or 16 ounces of water as soon as you wake up don't brush your teeth nothing just grab it off your night table drink it then go to the bathroom, take your shower, brush your teeth, do whatever, and watch how your body says thank you and is ready to let you have that wonderful elimination. So you should go to the bathroom. It's very important. And the walls of the colon, like you were saying, the intestines, hold, grab, and everything can stick and stay. And you glow, go out and out and out, and then you say, oh, I want to lose this. Well... Your colon is very accommodating, and it has accommodated all of that waste that you didn't push out. So it's real important to do colon cleanses, very, very important to do colon cleanses. And if you need to have assistance getting that waste out, do it. It's important. Now, you mentioned that we should drink water, yes, correct? Yes, yes. And I've talked on the show before about alkaline water, and, and there is a difference in water. And, you know, I would like people to hear from another perspective because the water that comes out of our faucet is not always the most purest water in the world. And then there's water that are in plastic bottles, and a lot of people let the plastic bottles sit in the sun and the, and the plastic leaches into it, yes. which creates a problem. And then there is what is referred to alkaline, and that seems to be a new thing that people are talking about. And, of course, if you have your body in an alkaline state, it's more difficult for disease to live in it. But, but let's hear from you, you know, your, your explanation about the difference between regular water and, and alkaline water and why alkaline water is important to the body. Well, alkaline water is important because you, it hydrates you faster. And like you said, when your body is alkalized, it helps the diseases not to live. There's nowhere to live. It's too healthy it's too good it's too friendly inside there so the diseases have nothing to latch on to now I disagree about uh, tap water being bad if you put a filter on your tap water it's okay to drink 
It just needs to be filtered because there's so much garbage and toxins into our, fil our water. So if you can't get alkalized water, you can drink your tap water. Just get a filter, a Brita, simple Brita. I tell people all the time, just, I don't mind if you don't drink alkalized water. I think you should. I think it's better. It's more hydrating. You, you feel like you can drink t 32 ounces of alkalized water and feel like you only had an 8-ounce cup. That's how hydrating it is, okay? And it helps to push waste out. It helps with so many things. It helps to make your cells float instead of stick all together and be all yucky. And that's where all the diseases go. If it's all sticky and placky and that type of thing, the wa what alkalized water does is it opens up and lets your blood just flow and your lymphatic system flow and all the fluids in your body float instead of stick together and hold on to toxins. And um, you asked about another water? Well, yeah. Oh, regular water, BPA. Yeah. BPA is a poison that they say causes a lot of cancer. And a lot of people leave their arrowhead or whoever in the trunk of their car and think, oh, I got water in my car, I'm just going to go get it. Well, first of all, that trunk is very hot. So, yes, and it's, it helps the bottle to bleed, in, the BPA to bleed into the water. So you're pretty much drinking toxic water and you can taste it. It tastes like you're drinking plastic water. So really don't leave your bottles in the car and then come back and drink them. Okay. Don't cook your water, don't use your water as tea. <laughs> you know, that's another thing because we're, we're talking, you know, and, and health, and there's a lot of areas we, that, you know, regarding health, I think, you know, vitamins and supplements, but also food and, you know, the right kinds of food. But the other thing is, and I know that you know a little bit about this, and that's what you cook the foods in. Oh, aluminum pans and Teflon and all of those cancer-causing, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, uh, everyone wants to be in the business, so we have Teflon, we have, what is that? I don't even, this, that pan is nonstick, radiation, it's 10 minutes, a lot. <laughs> I hurt, no, I'm just kidding. It's just so many, you know, it's chemicals. Everything is made out of a chemical. That's the bottom line, it's chemical. Our food is chemical now. I always tell people, you know, this watermelon was made in a, a warehouse in Rancho Cucamonga. You know, I tell them that. I said, you know what, go for the seeded watermelon, you know, Fresh is always best. You want to eat more greens. I know I'm going around your pen, but I'm going into just eating just what we should eat. We should eat more green. Make the plate full of greens. A little bit of meat if you must, and hopefully some salmon or some fish or some sort, something really good for you. And then, <laughs> and then a little starch. You can have a little itty-bitty white rose or red rose potato. Not that rusted potato, though, because that rusted potato is a lot of sugar sticks to the pancreas a lot of sugar well we I, again we've got major problems with diabetes major problems with juvenile diabetes let's talk a little bit more about the cooking okay okay because some people so, think that it, it you know that and and i guess you, when i was growing up everything was cooked with crisco oil you know i mean that, that was kind of like the way that you, you fried chicken in crisco oil you cook with crisco oil you know and i think crisco oil was better back then do you i think everything changed yes i think a lot of things changed it, everything became hydrogenated oils and you know pretty much motor oil and crisco oil were are now the same oil before crisco oil was made from a better source just like the soybean just the soybean i mean everything is genetically modified now and they have changed every single thing so there's now you want to say, can I eat olive oil instead of Crisco oil? Is well, that what you're asking about? No, I was going to ask about the different kinds of oil because, it, you know, there, there's olive oil, there's peanut oil, there's coconut oil. I understand coconut oil is the healthiest. But what I really, before I got into that, because you keep mentioning GMOs. Now, I know what it means, genetically, genetically modified. But I don't think a lot of the people out there understand, and I, and I know they just passed, it, it amazed me because for years, they were allowed to sell GMOs, and they didn't have to tell the public they were GMOs. Right. They've just now passed laws that make it mandatory, and I don't know why, because they always labeled everything else, to label it that it has to be a label. But, but explain what a GMO is. That law didn't pass in California where it should have passed. It didn't pass? It did not pass in California where it should have passed. But genetically modified means that 
it was made in a warehouse for our laboratory first and they changed it they it's not the apple we used to eat that had you go into the bathroom as soon as you ate it or that watermelon that you ate and you couldn't stop going to the bathroom because you couldn't stop eating that watermelon <laughs> which was so fabulous and grapes where are our concord grapes i mean like where are our grapefruit seeds our grapes that are real grapes i mean 1985 i believe is when things really went and they changed so many things and got rid of so much good food and just start genetically modifying it. I almost didn't even want to have a kid because I said, my baby will never know what real food tastes like because it'd be George Jetson type of food. And that's what we're getting now, and that's genetically modified. Uh, you know, a chicken that came out of a little pill bag, that's what's next. Really? Yeah. So, <laughs> so people talk about organic. And now, would you recommend that people buy certified organic foods then? Oh, absolutely. If you can find organic and just believe it, pray over it and believe that it's real organic food because, you know, organic is on this side and non-organic is on that side and the pesticides that are sprayed get on the organic side as well. So, you know, you got to pretty much, you know. Well, you know, I was, years ago, I was involved in the process for getting things certified organic. Yes. I've been around the, the natural health industry a long time. And when we did it originally, it was, it was done in such a way that the, the, they would come out every so often and take samples out of the soil, send them to a laboratory, and if it, if it, if it was determined at that laboratory that there was no, no chemicals in the soil, no nothing in the soil, then it was considered organic. But now they've changed it, I understand, to where the farmer no longer has to have that soil tested and sent in. He just has to sign a document stating that, it, that he hasn't used any chemicals or pesticides. And, you know, it's interesting because I have a friend that has a cancer hospital, and I was down to visit him recently, and the place was full of Amish people. And I'm going, this doesn't make sense. I said, all these Amish, I said, they grow everything naturally. He said, what you don't understand, Terry, is that they live near the factories, yeah. and the factories have polluted the soils, yes. have polluted the, the water that goes under the water table, and have now come into their soils. And, and, and they, were, they had a very high, high incident because what happened was their bodies were so used to everything natural right. that they had not built up an immune system to take the kind of toxicity that was coming through that they were never used to, and it was coming through their foods. Right. And so the, 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 the level of cancer was, was increasing greatly. And that's amazing that you say that. So if you go on one of my detoxes and you detox and change your eating habits for one year and turn around and go on back to trying to eat some of the things you used to eat, you will not be able to eat it. Nothing. It will make you so sick you will wonder why and how you ever ate it before. Amen. Yes. You know, we've got about five minutes left. One other thing I want to cover, we don't have time to really do it today because of the time, but we're coming into the cold and flu season. We've also been hearing a lot about this Ebola. Uh, we've been hearing about other types of, of things that are going on around the world. And most of those are viruses. Yes. And one of the things that I understand, and, and one of the products that, that I've, I've found great interest in recently, is the, um, the Eon Silver Solution. And I know there are several types of silvers, collodial, uh, covalent, and, and even, as you mentioned, other types as well. Um, and what I want to talk to you about a little bit is how this silver and products like this can be used to maybe uh, as a preventative against flu, colds, those type of things, and possibly uh, help in the recovery process. And we won't have time to get into that today, so we're going to do that next week. But, but let's talk about how, with cold and flu season coming on, you can use things. And, you know, I gargle with peroxide every day, right. and which, is a, which is a very, very powerful uh, antioxidant to kill, you know, uh, things from happening. But uh, let, talk about this a little bit. Well, I love silver. Silver is near and dear to my heart. Silver pretty much saved my son's life. He had streptococcus pneumonia, and he was in Children's Hospital. And, you know, they came in with their charts, and they said, today's protocol, tomorrow's protocol, next week's protocol. And I was like, oh, Lord, 
okay, I'm mommy right now, but you need to turn me back into the herb specialist that I am. Tell me what I need to go and get out of my shop so I can cure my son before they put him through all of this. So I went, I got my silver, came back, poured it down his throat. He healed Johnny on the spot. The doctor came in the room and he said, what did you do? <laughs> I said, me? I didn't do anything. He goes, oh, no, I've never seen anyone heal from streptococcus pneumonia so fast. And I said, well, I gave him silver. And he said, and I showed him the bottle of silver, and he said, oh, you did the right thing. I said, thank you, and you know it works, so you should tell your other patients. Don't let them lay up here and suffer. So silver, like I said, is near and dear to my heart. Silver is amazing. It works fast, it works quick, and it will hit it hard. Mercer, all of those nasty little germs that the hospital carries around, okay, it will hit it hard. It will hit the Ebola heart. It will hit any staph infection, E. coli heart, streptococca heart. It hits all of that very hard. Meningitis, you know, I can go on and on. Malaria, my friends, we all got a chance to see this term malaria around in three days. Silver is amazing, and I think that everyone should have it in their bathroom and in their kitchen. They should drink it in the bathroom in the morning and in the kitchen at night before they go to bed. It should be in your house because it's wonderful. Flus, no, no more flus. My son has not been sick since that streptococcus pneumonia. I leave it on the counter. I say take it before you leave to go to school. When H1N1 came around, when that yellow flu came around, all of that, never. No kids in his classroom. He was the only one at school. He said, Mommy, why am I the only one at school? I said, Silver, baby. And so now I'm known as the silver lady because all the moms now drink silver because they, <laughs> they know it works. When, tell us your, the name of your, your, uh, your wellness center, where it's located, and, and how they can get in touch with you. Okay, my, uh, I have an herb and vitamin shop in Los Angeles. It's 3415 West 43rd Place in Lamert Park. The phone number is 323 Two nine five one nine six nine, and I'm there always. And I am, you know, I welcome anyone and everyone to come in and let me help them with their herbal needs. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show today. You know, one of the things that's very important that we want to we want to do on the show. Now, we are very big, and as as last week as we did, we did a show totally on divine healing, supernatural healing, and I believe that prayer heals. But I also know that you know. And, 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 and this is something that the, that, that the Holy Spirit revealed to me, is when, when Jesus put the mud in the man's eyes, because I, I asked him, why did you do that? And he said, I didn't need to do it. He said, I could have just said see, and he would have seen. Mm -hmm. But he said, it was to be an example of how I would use the things that I created to heal for today, because there are many out there that really don't have the faith to believe in supernatural right. healing. Right. So God has created... You know, it's like I say, one of the oldest treatments in the world for a cut is aloe vera. Absolutely. I mean, you get a cut, you take aloe vera plant, rub it on it, it heals. And it heals a lot quicker than, than any medicines that I know. So, you know, God has created a whole lot of things that are beneficial. Uh, they, again, they use silver during the time of the blue blonic plague, and those that were drinking out of silver cups didn't get it. That's right. Uh, so, you know, there's a, there's a whole history to silver and uh, we don't have enough time to talk about it on the show today, but we're going to continue for the weeks to come. So let me pray for you before we leave. Father, we thank you for these people that are watching today. We thank you, Father, that there is a healing comes upon them, Father. If there is any sick out there, Father, let them call out to you. And, Father, let them be healed, Father. Now, Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to share your wisdom. We thank you for the opportunity to share what you have given us and created in your planet for the purposes of healing, Father. And we thank you, Father, that we want everyone out there to live in, live in divine health and have supernatural blessings. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. I'm Dr. Terry Warren. This is Health and Wellness. And we'll see you here next week, same time, 4 o'clock, on The Cross TV. Thank you for joining us.